Welcome back everyone. I'm just outside the city of Hechuan, uh, near the mega city of Chongqing, and I'm visiting an ancient castle, which was the site of the last stand of the Song Dynasty against the Mongols. It's not on a lot of people's travel radar, this place, I don't think. I've wanted to come here for a while though. It looks pretty cool and there's, um, there's a bunch of stuff here. I'm really excited. It's a hike up a hill, obviously. Everything's a hike up a hill in China. Um, let's get going. All right, this is the, uh, the first of, apparently there's eight gates uh, leading into the castle. This is the first one we've come to. The walls are pretty immense. So this castle is uh, built on top of a hill with rivers on three sides of it. Um, obviously a really good defensive position, that's why it was picked. And it did the job for 36 years. They held it 36 years. Um, and about 200 battles were fought here before finally you know, the dying breath of the Song Dynasty, the garrison stationed here, submitted to the Mongols. Just see through the mist, obviously where the rivers come around this little peninsula that the, the fortress is on. God, it's so misty yesterday also, I was in uh, Lushan yesterday. Just the mist coming off these rivers in the morning is crazy. It's starting to climb quite high now. Um, got hot as well, the sun came out. Had to discard the scarf. It is winter obviously, it's January, but in these bamboo forests in southern China, God, even in January, it can still get warm suddenly, very close. Just coming towards the uh, Huguo Temple. Everything's so like mossy and damp. Kind of like Chongqing and uh, Sichuan, this area. Everything, actually some of the stuff is old, of course, but like it looks truly ancient. Like it's been here for a, just a million years. Love it. The hilltop castle is dotted with temples, but as beautiful as they are, it's time to hear the history. So the 13th century Mongol conquest began when Genghis Khan, very famous Genghis Khan, uh, united the Mongolian tribes and obviously began conquering Central Asia and northern parts of what is today China. The Jurchen Jin dynasty was what ruled northern, what is now northern China at the time, and under kind of a loose alliance with the Song Dynasty, which was the Han ruled dynasty, um, the Mongols defeated the Jin. Now, following the defeat of the Jin, the Song and Mongol uh, wasn't really an alliance, but something like that very quickly broke down and um, the Mongols invaded Song China. So, a number of fortresses, like hilltop fortresses, just like this one, were built around Sichuan and, uh, and Chongqing area. And um, this one proved to be basically untakeable. It got to the point where, you know, they'd laid siege to it, tried to take it, failed, and obviously the Mongols were masters of siege warfare as well. Just proves how, you know, how good a position this place was, uh, was built in. Now in 1259, the great Khan, the fourth leader of the entire Mongol army, Monke Khan, he actually came here in person and led a siege on the castle. Now this is it why this place is so important because it was during the siege that actually the great Khan was either killed or died of cholera, dysentery. Chinese sources say he was wounded by either a crossbow or a cannonball and then died. Either way, he died. And what that resulted in was across, you know, even from Europe and Central Asia, all the Mongol forces pulled back and stopped their offensives. So suddenly this continuous wave of Mongol aggression across the world stopped, just stopped dead. And um, then there was obviously, the, they had a big power struggle, the Mongolians, over who was going to be the successor of Monke Khan. The winner of that was the very famous Kublai, who became Kublai Khan, the fifth Khan. Now year after year, Kublai Khan attacked and laid siege to the castle and failed. And this was a man who was no stranger to winning wars, obviously. Um, 
later completely took China and created the Yuan Dynasty. But nevertheless, every year came here, failed. Until eventually in 1279, when the Song Dynasty, that was the year the Song Dynasty fell. It was actually two months, I think, before the entire dynasty collapsed and uh, came under Mongolian control. The garrison at the castle surrendered to Kublai Khan, who, as he promised, spared them. So this place is called Diaoyuchang, fishing city or fishing castle or something like that, because a long time ago, so the story goes, um, the three rivers around this place flooded and the villagers, the local villagers, came to the top of the hill for refuge and, uh, you know, weeks passed, they had no food, the end was near and then a giant came out of the sky with a massive fishing rod caught some fish and gave it to them and they survived so that's where the, the hill is actually named like the fishing hill and that's where the castle is built cool story i believe it i believe every word of it of course look at this by the way this is like called the, the thousand buddha wall wow or rather, the Grotto of the Thousand Udder. It's pretty cool, it's Tang Dynasty. Um, there's apparently here somewhere, there's a 11 meter long carved into the side of the cliff uh, reclining Buddha. Also Tang Dynasty. No idea where it is. You think it'd be easy to find, it's 11 meters long. I will find it. I will, I will, I will. It's so high up here, the banks are so steep. They're surrounded by rivers on all sides. An amazing location. Okay, I think I found the 11 meter long Buddha. It was actually about 10 meters from where I just was, where the thousand Buddhas were. There's a lady here reading, so I'm gonna be quiet. So these are some old Song Dynasty stone tombs. They were discovered not that long ago, but they're from the 12th, 1230s. So just before, just before the Mongol invasion. The guy over there is loud, right? Can you hear that? <laughs> So the fortress walls are still um, largely intact. Obviously most of the interior buildings were probably made of wood and they are long gone. So basically what's left to see of the fort itself are these walls and uh, a few of the gates remain as well. And uh, it looks like you can walk quite a long way around the wall. It's quite a beautiful view actually, just uh, going around the, the edge of the cliff. It must have been pretty wild up here in the 13th century. You know, over 200 battles were fought here. 200 um, over about 30 plus years and managed to hold off what was an unstoppable force uh, in the 13th century, the Mongols. The Mongol force is said to have been about 100,000 strong, 100,000, led by the great Khan himself and they still couldn't get it done. Now the Mongol army was not just Mongols by the way, they had people from all over their conquered world um, bringing all sorts of like different siege weapons, different ideas. The Mongols are really good about doing that. That's why they were so successful in their conquest, which makes it all the more impressive that this place didn't actually fall. But then when you look at it, you know, when you're walking around up here, how would you go about <laughs> storming this place? It's a little hill, castle about 300 meters high, castles on the top. It's surrounded by rivers. There's really no way up here. I mean, obviously they had one road in, which apparently was like a plank walk, which they could remove the planks. So you just couldn't get in at all. Uh, there was no way. Very, very impressive stuff. Um, some military genius there from someone. <laughs> so this is a rebuild actually of the Dongxin Gate, which is 
on the east side, and the east side is the only side of the uh, the whole hill which connects to land. The rest of it's all rivers. So most of the fighting apparently took place right here. So I'm back in the town of Hochman because there is a pagoda here. And I have a, an ongoing pagoda mission to visit all the ancient pagodas and climb them all if I can, of China. This is the tallest one in, uh, in Chongqing. It's about 60 meters high and you can get a ticket and uh, get to the top of it. So let's go. All right, let's climb. There's uh, sculptures of the eight immortals on the door. Let's rock. Ticket was 10 kwai to get in, which is not bad, is it? Um, it's the symbol of this city, this pagoda. It's not super old, as you can probably tell. It's Qing Dynasty. It was first built in 1810 and then added to in the 1830s. It's very tall though, but as you can see, it's quite wide and comfortable, not like some of the older ones where you've got to crawl in them. Anyway, let's keep going. So for those of you who didn't see the last video, I've set myself a lifetime, a lifelong mission to visit all the ancient pagodas of China. Obviously it's impossible, but I think it's a good thing to do, you know, I kind of like Buddhist architecture. Um, and pagodas are very much, in most Chinese cities, and ancient cities, certainly they were, they were the focal point. Things in China were always built quite low and wide. Very different to um, European architecture, which height was very important. Pagodas were the one, exempt, one kind of exception to the rule where they were built tall. So you could climb them, get a good view. All right, so in this pagoda is where I will finish this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, interesting little part of China, this. And uh, moving on tomorrow, to new places. I'll see you in the next video. All the best, take care and bye-bye.